10 things I do and don't do in the lawn. Over here, it looks much better for some reason. Yep. All right, so here's the list. Just kind of, I'll go through it. So quality genetics. You're not going to get color like this without quality genetics. So spend some time on INTEP, so National Turf Grass Evaluation Program, and select grass seed that's appropriate for your area. I'll probably do a video on that later. And I'm a cool season guy. I don't know warm season grasses at all. So one thing I don't do, humic acid. So Matt Martin, the grass factor, did a video on it. He goes over every study. My takeaway from it was, at least for my grass type, it does slightly more harm than good. It causes a um, little bit of stunted growth, lower root weight, and you just don't need it. It's a waste of time, waste of money, in my opinion. All right, urea. I do spray urea, that's it. That's the only thing I spray for fertilizer at all. Um, in my area, I don't need it. In almost, I would say 90% of the country, you don't need any phosphorus even when seeding. You don't need any potassium, even if you're in a cold area or hot area. Actually, potassium will do more harm than good a lot of the time, so check out turf grass epistemology. So Dr. Travis Shaddix, he does a lot on potassium. He, he's a soil scientist, uh, so fertilizer expert and just, uh, plant health expert, I would say. Uh, he doesn't know a lot of topics well, but fertilizer he really knows very well. So one thing I don't do, phosphorus and potassium, one thing I do, urea. So mowing, I do actually try to mow, but I'm not real strict about it. I just adhere to the one third rule and that's about it. I mow, if I feel like mowing, I'm not out mowing every day. I probably mow every five days roughly. And uh, one thing I don't do, low cut. So a lot of YouTubers will do trendy half inch cut, quarter inch cut, three eighths, whatever. Oh man, mine's at 0.19 or whatever. This is cut as high as I can do it. So this is real, mo real mode, hence the nice, pretty stripes. So you're not gonna get stripes like this without having rye grass. Kentucky bluegrass stripes, okay, but rye is like half of the blade. <laughs> I picked up a nasty blade. Half of the blade is shiny and the other side isn't. So you get these nice, light stripe dark stripe light stripe so what's going on is that's pointing up reflecting up at the sun and the other stripe is pointing at you and that's what makes it uh, dark like that so i do mow i don't do a low cut all right so another thing i do that i think is important for anybody sharp blades if your grass if the tip of it looks shredded at all that's going to show a yellow it's going to encourage disease it's going to lose water it's just not a good thing so sharpen your blades regularly if you have any like mole hills or something you're going to need to sharpen them a lot more often if you are cutting high and you just have grass you don't need to sharpen as often if you have abrasive grasses like fescue yeah you might need to sharpen a little more often if you have blue grass probably less often so just keep that in mind nice and sharp if i was you know, had a moderate amount of land. My backyard, I try to sharpen them once a month, roughly when I'm mowing regularly every other month. I'm not that strict about it. And this is real cut, so I do try to, I back lap this and uh, keep it sharp. So, sharp blades, one thing I don't do, low quality soil tests. Anything you mail in water is total garbage. Um, there was a my soil test, I was just on Facebook in a group, and the guy, He's like, okay, here's my soil test. What should I do? I said, round file it. He said, what do you mean? I said, it's worthless. What area are you in? He said, Portland. His soil test was showing low in copper, iron, and there was one more, copper, iron, and sulfur. I pulled up soil maps of his area. He has the highest in the country of copper, iron, and sulfur. Um, there was one of those. He wasn't like bright red. It was like, depends on where you are in Portland, but basically, he had plenty, like way, way, way more than enough of all three of those. And his soil test was showing low on all of those. And of course, it was showing low on boron, which it always is. I've seen maybe one out of 200 my soil tests or yard mastery, same thing, uh, soil tests that did not show low on boron, just one. And I don't know how that happened, but every other one that I've ever seen has been low on boron. All right, so water per evapotranspiration. So in the summer, when everyone else is watering, I'm paying attention to how much water is being lost. So transpiration is water lost through the grass blade. So the higher cut, the more transpiration you're gonna get, but the less evaporation you're gonna get. So evaporation is drying on the dirt. So evapotranspiration is just a combination of all water loss. So there is a, I'll probably put a link down to it at the bottom of the screen, or not, you know, down in the link somewhere for evapotranspiration map. You can zoom into that map. Then uh, below the map on the left, it'll say create a bookmarkable URL. You can do it daily, you can do it weekly. I like weekly, but if you don't like math, you can do daily and 
what works for almost anyone. You water every three days and about at about 75% of evapotranspiration and not year round, just when you, when you have to water, so during drought. So watering, important, just during the summer. So you don't want your whole lawn to go dormant and half dead. And I'm, I'm talking to cool season people here. Uh, and then have to come back from that. You want it to just be healthy and not go through that struggle, or that, at least that's what I uh, believe in. When it does go through winter dormancy, there's nothing you can do about that. One thing I don't do, and this is gonna be kind of controversial, but it just hasn't worked for me, is pre-emergent. This has never, it has seen pre-emergent once, but um, I don't think it did anything except maybe harm the grass a little bit. Pre-emergents are root pruners, so just keep that in mind. You don't want to go, oh, I just dumped a whole bunch of pre-emergent down. These weeds are never going to come up. Well, say goodbye to your roots. So uh, that's one thing I don't do. This right here, I actually don't even use post-emergent on it. I just use pocket knife on this, and this is only 2,400 square feet, so it's not that bad. Uh, today I walked it for POA and found zero POA plants. Last time I walked it is when they were kind of coming out. I probably found 20 or 30. So you do it, they're gone. So not that big of a deal. And typically it might be, you know, four, five, six POA plants in the whole yard. No big deal. And what I do is I just look for seed heads or that color and that's it. Yeah, POA is a big deal in my area. It'll, yeah, just light green patches all over your lawn. So I do spot weed and I do not uh, spoon feed. So spraying fertilizer, it's real trendy on YouTube to maybe spray every week. I don't do that and I also don't dump you know, a whole pound or pound and a half of nitrogen in an application. I kind of believe right in the middle because I don't want to be mowing more than I have to. I don't want to be applying more than I have to. I want to do as little as possible. I am out here as little as possible. I don't mow that often. I fertilize once a month. And when I'm out here mowing, I also weed at the same time. So that's about it. And I'll water. Watering is one thing that does take me some time because I do not have irrigation, but I have a ton of water pressure. So it actually doesn't take that long, but still kind of annoying. One thing that I do believe in, grub control. One application, once a year, a celeprin, 11.83 grams per thousand square feet, done, done all year. So in warmer areas, so going south in the United States, I would say apply that in May. It has a really long soil half-life, so getting it down early is better, but you don't wanna to go too early. Basically what you're trying to do is interrupt the grub life cycle. So when they're having babies, that's when you want the preventative in the ground. It basically prevents their jaw, their bones from developing and they can't eat. So that is how you do that, easy. Bifen is over 100 times more toxic than chlorantronelloprol, which is the active ingredient in GrubX. It's the active ingredient in Acelaprin. So if you prefer granulars, do GrubX at roughly double bag rate. I like to do high rate once a year, call it good. It's not that big of a deal. And then it's just insurance that you don't have random dead spots. If something happens, you know it's not grubs. So I do believe in doing an annual grub control. It's not that expensive. It's not that difficult. Once a year. All right, one thing I don't believe in, that's kind of an optional thing, is PGRs. Um, yes, they can benefit, uh, but they take time to do, and they also come with risks. They also cost money, and I just feel like I got chemicals on me. I don't know, if, you know, spraying hormones. I know it's like a plant hormone, but I just, uh, yeah, I would rather not. So I also don't do kelp another PGR technically. It's just doing the opposite thing, making it grow more. So I don't do either of those. No kelp, no PGR, but I'm gonna count that as one thing. So one thing I do, uh, this one, I don't really believe in this all that much, but in my area, the pH does run very low. I think my backyard on, I did one soil test, um, quality soil test, but uh, my pH was roughly five in the backyard. It might've been a little lower than that even. So I do believe in a little bit of pH adjustment. I like pelletized lime out of a solo chest mount spreader. Uh, really like my solo spreader for anything granular, but mostly I'm liquid fertilizer. Just urea, melt it in water, apply it, and uh, just rinse it off the blades or apply it right before it rains. Or you can do sufficient carrier volume, which is about two gallons per pound of urea. Micronutrients, I don't do them at all. I'm gonna let that speak for itself. But yeah, there are lots of micros in my area. There's lots of micros almost everywhere. If you're on the Southeast coastline, so Florida, and then the bordering states on the coastline, yes, there's some depleted areas. You're gonna need some stuff, uh, in, even including potassium every once in a while or phosphorus. But yeah, when I seed, I don't put phosphorus down. I don't put starter fruit down. I don't put potassium down year round. It's just gonna be urea. So no micronutrients, no macronutrients even really except for nitrogen. 
And I, and I would say that is going to get you the nicest lawn in probably 80 to 90% of the country. It's going to be nitrogen only is going to be the best fertilizer you can get. And you can get urea at uh, co-ops, at like coastal tractor supply, uh, like farming supplies. And it's like 20 bucks for 50, 50 pounds. So you got 23 pounds of nitrogen for 20 bucks. So less than a dollar a pound. And uh, if you look at like a Sunday brand little bag of fertilizer, I've got one in my area that's $58 a pound. And just at Lowe's for nitrogen, $58 a pound versus less than a dollar a pound. And then the other Sunday products are like 30 bucks a pound for the nitrogen. All right, so fertilizer. I do believe there's a difference in quality. If you're going granular, I want small, small prill size. That's gonna give you more even color. So the more prills per foot, the more even your color is. So that is definitely something I believe in. Uh, Scott's is a great brand. If you have high pH, uh, Propeat. I know it's expensive, but Propeat. It's got nice prills and it's ammonium sulfate based, so it's gonna bring your pH down. And it really does a good job. Ammonium sulfate does a very good job of bringing pH down. So that would be my recommendation. And I do also recommend, this isn't on my list, but I do my own soil testing because the only thing I care about is pH. And I don't even care that much about that. Small prills and the counter to that is pasture grade prills. We're talking about uh, Stay Green, we're talking about Lily Miller, uh, Perfect Blend, and you know, half a dozen fertilizers at Lowe's or whatever. You fill the bag, just put your hand on the bag. You can feel if there's big old, if it feels like gravel, that's not suitable for a lawn. That is for a pasture. If you're growing hay, sure, why not? But if you're growing lawn, get a quality fertilizer. And Scott's, yeah, it doesn't have potassium. It doesn't have phosphorus half the time. I don't care. That's a that's a, a advantage. I think that's a better fertilizer. So the lower the salt index, one thing I noticed in my yard, when I was spraying your the first time I sprayed urea only, it was last summer, and I noticed I was like. What is going on with my lawn? It likes this. So I kept doing it. It kept liking it. So I figure it probably has something to do with salt index. There's plenty of potassium there. There's plenty of phosphorus there. So the more excess is not better when it comes to nutrition. It just is going to interrupt mass flow and just not get the nutrient into the plant where it needs to be. So power scissors. Uh, that's kind of down at the bottom here. So this is kind of more important at the top, less important at the bottom or more lower confidence or whatever. But this one I am very confident in actually. <clears throat> Power scissors do such a good job edging. You can't get that, this quality of an edge with an edger, a stick edger, professional edger, anything. It just doesn't look like this. So when it comes to edging, definitely power scissors. And then, yeah, what I don't use, I would use a string trimmer if I really can't get to a spot Sorry, there's a shadow here, so you can't really see the quality of that, but here you go. <clears throat> yeah, power scissors are just worth it. So here is my lawn from over here. <clears throat> Doesn't look nearly as good from over here, in my opinion, but whatever. So in general, and this is not even at all, not level at all. I need to throw some sand. I haven't leveled this once. <clears throat> I haven't sprayed a post-emergent on this once. That's what I do. Copy me if you want. I don't care if you subscribe. I'm not trying to be monetized. I'm not posting any links. Uh, nothing that I make money on. So, see you next time. Thanks.